How's it going everyone? JKXVX here, back on Forza Horizon 4 once again. Now this is my first video since the release of the LEGO expansion for Forza Horizon 4. I did do a live stream when it was released, it was a brilliant live stream, thank you to everyone who watched that and everyone who donated as well. The expansion has been out for long enough now for me to come to my decision and my personal opinion that this is the best expansion that we've had on Forza Horizon in general so far. So today's video I'm going to talk about why I think that and just give my personal opinion on the expansion. Just two things I'd like to say real quick, my hay fever is through the roof at the moment so if I look leathered and it look like I'm going to sneeze, I'm sorry. And two, because Forza's quite Lego-y at the moment, I've thought of buying the Lego Bugatti Chiron, the big massive model that you can build. And I thought, if this video gets a thousand likes, if you really want to see it, I will buy a Bugatti Chiron, this one on screen, and I'll do a little build series of it on the channel. I might even live stream doing it as well. So if you want, if you want to see that on the channel, let's get a thousand likes and let me know in the comment section below. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me again. Where's my tissues? I need my tissues. So, the LEGO expansion. I'm absolutely loving it. Not gonna lie, when I heard the rumours of the expansion being LEGO related, I was quite happy because it kind of confirms that it's something quite arcadey and quite exciting. But I was wondering what on earth they could do to make the gameplay a bit different, even if it was just a LEGO world. And I've got to tell you, I think they've smashed it. They've done a good job. Let's just compare it to all the previous expansions we've had in the past. For example, Blizzard Mountain. One of the main things about Blizzard Mountain was the fact that it was a different kind of scenery. It was snowy. Other than that, there wasn't really much else. The races were kind of the same. I mean, I know there was like storm races, but the races were kind of the same. Hot Wheels, although Hot Wheels was fantastic, that's still one of my favourites ever. The only thing that was good about that was the map. We had a massive new kind of map with hoops everywhere and it was really good. I'm not knocking it, it was fantastic. Other than that, there wasn't anything else new per se. Fortune Island took it up a notch. Yes, there was the map, but I didn't find the map very exciting, to be honest, on Fortune Island, my personal opinion. But along with Fortune Island, we got somewhat of a new kind of feature, the, the treasure hunt feature. But I think the trouble with that is you can complete it rather quickly. And once it's complete, that's it. However, if we have a look at the Lego expansion, they've added loads. It's brilliant. Now let's have a look at this for example. With the LEGO expansion, not only did we get the brand new map, which is this here. This LEGO brick challenge bunch of whatever you'd call this is amazing. I think it's brilliant that they've done this. Look at the sheer amount of challenges that there are here to do. I mean, as I said, the trouble with Fortune Island, you could complete it rather quickly. And you, the way you completed it is just by doing races, which isn't a new thing in the game. Races are still just races. But to complete the Lego, which I would class as completing all of this, you've got to do a lot more than just races. For example, you've got these challenges, which is get from this point to this point in an S1 class car. It's a very different thing they've never done before. It's very fun. I actually enjoy doing these, unlike races, for example. Little challenges and stuff like that. And then you've got the monstrous amount of PR stunts to do. Ram into a parked tractor ram into a coffee cart it's just really bizarre and goofy things and then obviously you've got all of the races as well to do on top of that but the point i'm trying to get across is if you wanted to 100 percent the lego expansion i.e complete all of this it would take quite a while i've noticed that donjo won songs already managed it he took he didn't take it very long at all but for a casual player who goes on and off the game for a few hours maybe a day this is going to last quite a while in my opinion and the really, really good thing about this is you can choose what to do next. Like with Fortune Island, you unlocked one treasure thing, then you had to do races and stuff to get the next one, and then you had to do it to get the next one. With this, do whatever you want. So if you want to feel like doing a race, you can do that. If you want to do this, you can do this. It's good. So the point I'm trying to get across is there is a lot to do. Regardless of the map, feature-wise, there is a lot to do, and it's pretty cool. I can imagine a feature like this, even on the normal world, would be pretty funny and interesting. And of course, one of the other good things about the expansion is the map. Blizzard Mountain. It was a mountain that was snowy, but other than the Blizzard Mountain part, nothing else. Fortune Island. Other than the Fortune Storm Island part, nothing else. But with this, we've got a Legoland, but not just a Legoland. A stunt park. That itself is a pretty cool addition. We have a miniature town slash city. That itself is another good addition. We have an airport. 
Another good addition, we have the sand dunes, which are a ton of fun. And then of course the main thing, the racetrack. We have an individual racetrack and drag strip within this expansion in the Lego world. So the point I'm trying to get across, we've not just got a Lego land, we've got a bunch of different things including in that Lego land. Cities, stunt parks, buildings, sand dunes, um, the track, the airport. And I think it helps that it's all so different as well. With the previous expansions in the past, like I'll bring up Blizzard Mountain again, it was very off-roady. There's There were bits in the Australia world that were similar to Blizzard Mountain, but there was just a lot of it in Blizzard Mountain. Fortune Island, for example, was quite off-roady. There's already off-roady bits in Horizon 4, it was just a bigger version of it. This Lego expansion, there's nothing Lego related in Forza, so to get this, everything seems brand new, instead of just an expanded version of something we already have, like off-road stuff. I think one of the most important things about an expansion is not only the map expansion part of it, but also how different it feels and also the amount of new features they add as well. In the past expansions, I think the main kind of feature has been the map and that's it. Lego absolutely kills it. We've got the brand new Lego challenges. We've got the brand new Lego cars, which is nothing that we've seen before. We've got the Horizon Cube things that I'm right next to now, that thing there. We've got the alien fuel cell things and the alien energy things. I forget what they're called, but you know what I mean. There's lots of different you would say small things, but they add up to a big thing. Can you imagine how boring this would be if this was just a map expansion? If we didn't have the cubes, the alien stuff, or even the challenges, or the ability to build your own house, it'd be completely different. But I think the fact that they've added so much new little things makes it feel like a new game. So, oh my word, I didn't know I've been here before. I'll have those, thank you. Now another thing about this expansion is you don't actually have to do races. One of my biggest things that I don't like about Horizon sometimes, that I actually mentioned in my Horizon is Dying video a couple weeks ago, is that the fact that the races just seem the same. The races just seem the same no matter where you are or what car you're in, it just doesn't feel different enough. And I think the good thing about the LEGO expansion you don't have to do races. If you're not the type of person to enjoy lots of Forza Horizon 4 races, you are in no way forced whatsoever to do them. I could easily complete all of these in the top right hand corner, get all of these challenges done, get loads of Lego bricks, complete all of these red PR stunts here and all the orange little miscellaneous stuff, and probably get all the Lego centers and all the house upgrades, and I wouldn't have had to do a single race. Honestly, I'll be honest, before this expansion came out, I cannot remember the last time I went on Horizon to play and have fun. But since this expansion, I've been doing it a fair bit because there's little challenges for me to do, there's jobs for me to do, there's tasks and stuff that aren't race related. And to be honest, the races on here are actually good. The roads on this map are actually amazing. You may have seen at the beginning of the video I was in a McLaren Center because I don't have the Lego one. And the roads are just so fun, they flow so well, um, the corners are just nice, there's no ridiculous corners that you have to slow down for. The roads are just very good, and it's very enjoyable, it's very colourful. All of the roads around here are just extremely fast and good. Now even though I haven't done the races yet, I can tell that this race, for, for example here, definitely does these nice roads. So even though the races in this game the least exciting thing for me on this expansion i can see them being fun one of the first things i did back on fortune island was get all of the influence boards but there's so much to do on this lego expansion that i've not even bothered yet i'll get to that when i want to there's just so much to do i really like it i really do on the other expansions you feel the urge to explore everywhere get all the boards because there's not a massive amount of other stuff to do once you've got used to the map but on this I feel no urge to get these roads yet or get the influence boards because I'm having fun with the other stuff at the moment. That can wait. Anyway, I know I've kind of babbled on in today's video. Anyway, I know I've kind of babbled on a bit too much in this video, but I wanted to kind of take my opinion on this expansion. I'm going to sneeze again. Stop it. I've seen that a fair few other YouTubers have kind of given their opinion, done a video on it and why they think it's the best or not so good or whatever. I thought I'd do the same. So please let me, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this expansion. I personally think it's a good one, my favourite so far. 
and I think it's going to revive the game for longer than I thought the second expansion would. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. And other than that, well done Playground Games, you've smashed it out of the park with this one. Right, now it's time to have a quick look at this month's Loot Gaming Loot Crate Loot Box thing. Let's get right into it and see what we have today. Oh, is that a Fallout hat? I believe it is. Starting off with a hat which says, Welcome Home on it, which is a Fallout quote. Fallout 4, I believe, something like that. And there it is. It's genuinely quite a nice quality hat, actually, to be honest. Oh, it's got a little cardboard thing. Close up of the design there. Pretty cool. As always, if you're interested in this, you can go to the link in the description, lootcrate.com slash jkxvx, and then use the code jkxvx for discount off of your Loot Crate order. What else do we have? That looks like a figurine of some sort. Let's have a ganders in that real quick. That's pretty cool. What? This doesn't say where it's from. Little Sister Vinyl Figure. Oh, Bioshock. I see. Again, that's quite nice quality. So there's the thing. The lighting's a bit off. There she is. Hello. And then, oh, that's cool. I didn't even realize what that was. That is a diary or a notepad of some sort. A, a notepad, probably. Let's, let's open it up and have a look. And it's an official licensed product as well, which is interesting. Oh, that feels really nice. Is that real leather or something? I'm not sure, but whatever it is, it feels really nice. Oh, it's just a notepad. And I tell you what, I will put that to use. I like the feel of that, though. That feels like a proper... That's nice. And then we have this, which came open easily then. Oh, trying to figure out what this is. What's, hang on a minute. What's this? Right, so that's a pin. There's usually a pin in Assassin's Creed, that's it. There's usually a pin in every single crate. So that's that one. Good quality. And then, oh, it's a keychain. Right, we've got a Horizon Zero Dawn keychain. That's very heavy. Sorry for the lighting. That's very heavy. Let's put some proper weight to it. And then I presume, yep, yeah, we've got a poster. Let's see what the poster's all about today. It's a Fallout one. That's what I'm talking about. I like that. And then on the back, we've got information about all the things we received. The Assassin's Creed pin, the Fallout hat, the Last of Us journal, that what it was, keychain, the little figure, or some socks. Oh, I could have won some socks. I got the figure instead. Oh well. So there you are guys. Thank you very much for watching. That was this month's Loot Crate unboxing. If you're interested in buying a crate like this where you get a monthly box full of surprises every month, you can go to the link in the description and then use code JKXVX for discount off your order. Thank you very much for watching. Ooh, I am happy with that today.